Bonnie Franklin, the Grim Sleeper, who for over 20 years was killing black women in South Central. Lonnie's story is written. Lonnie has been sentenced. He will spend the rest of his days in a California prison. So in hanging around at Jones Brothers, my family's auto parts store in South Central, my uncle told me about Monica. So I'm really grateful that now she feels comfortable sharing her story and hopefully her story will help somebody else. My name is Monica Hunter. I'm from Louisiana and I've been out here since I was seven. And one night I was going to my mother-in-law's house on 64th and Central to a tug away party. So I left my house about at nine. I just had twins, 1986. And I told my old man to watch the kids. I left the money with him, but I had a little money in my pocket. So the bus was taking so long. So I'm like, by the time I get to tug away party, it's gonna be over with. So the dude was coming down the street in a, in a yellow pinto, and he was driving real slow, a black brother. So I'm like, oh, shoot. He said, you want a ride? I said, yes, I will take a ride, sir. And he said, I just got off work. So he opened up the door to let me in. He was nice to me at first when I got in the car. Next thing I know, we hit 108. He, he hit the corner so fast. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like, well, um, don't worry about what I'm doing because when I get over here, you 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 gonna find out what I'm doing. I said, sir, I'm I'm, I'm not out to try to make no money. All I wanna do is get to the tugway party. He said, oh no, you ain't going nowhere. And he would, got the screwdriver out the glove department. He was shaking, he was shaking, shaking. He said, when I open up this door, you get out and you get butt naked. By the time I got out the door, the sheet was laying right down the side of the car. By the door, when I walked out on my side, the trash bins, two trash bins were sitting right behind me. And I'm like, what are you trying to do to me? Shut up, shut up, shut the f up. And I'm like, oh Lord, I done messed up. So I said, oh Lord, I don't know what to do. I said, I just hope he just raped me and just let me go, you know? I hope he don't kill me. He was in his trunk digging for something. And I was I was sitting on the seat on, on the passenger side, taking my clothes off, waiting to get laid down on the sheet. And when he came out the trunk, that's when the dude was walking down the street, making a noise, saying, I got it, I got it. I remember that word. And I'm like, he got what? And I, I looked, I'm like, help! Excuse me, sir, could you help me? And I got the screaming and hollering. When I got the screaming and hollering, he dropped the screwdriver. Then that's when I started running. I had one pants leg out. When I started running, girl, he came right in his car, right behind me. He was chasing me and I was scared. I was hitting all kinds of corners and stuff. So I'm hollering, I'm screaming with half a clothes on and I made it to my house. And I'm like, this man know where I live at. He gonna come back and get me. So I went to the house authorities to tell him about it, he was on a billboard. They said, girl, you know what? You ran into that man that's out killing all these black women, supposed to be prostitutes. What stopped you from going to the police? It was too late, probably, I think. I thought they said after 24 hours, you can't uh, complain or tell nobody about nothing. Mm -hmm. I've been through a lot of stuff before then, but not like this, you know, you know, you know. But not like that, but you know, just open containers, going back and forth to jail. I never told them nothing about it, you know, so. When I found out he got caught, I look at him on TV. I just said, he's in God's hand now. You know, God gonna take care of him now because it's too late for me to tell my story. This was in 1986. And I look at it and I go back there and look and I look at that trash bins back there and look down on the ground and just think about what could have happened to me that night, you know? That's where they probably would have found blood of me dead at. Right behind the welfare office. So uh, whatever he was looking for, that's probably saved my life too. And the guy coming down the street singing. So I just look at him like, Lord, I could have been gone in '86, but God wasn't ready for me. He wasn't ready for me.